Good morning, it's Dr. John Bennett, televising from Miami Beach, home of Neurosurgical TV. Today we have the pleasure of having noted neurosurgeon Atul Goel lecturing, and I'll, like, I'll let Ipe introduce him. Go ahead, Ipe. Hello. Hello, uh, everybody. Yeah, so it's a pleasure and an honor to introduce Professor Goyal. I mean, he was an inspiring figure from the time I was a resident about uh, 20 years back when I was, uh, when I had joined up for neurosurgery in Velour. I remember writing to uh, Dr. Goyal and from that time he's been an inspiring figure and I'm sure there's a lot of things to be learned from him. So let's go ahead and listen to what he has to say. Okay, Dr. Well, it's all yours. Just unmute yourself there. Okay. Oh. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, you can hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, let me. <laughs> Good, excellent. Can you see the screen? Yes, excellent. Yes, we can, we can, we can. Okay, so here I am in front of you, and I hope I'm able to see some of Miami Beach of John. <laughs> well, someday. And uh, I am locked down in my house for some days now. I hope this lockout gets over soon. And good evening from here in Mumbai to all of you. And good morning to you, John. Good morning. So I'm going to talk to you on a subject which is uh, uh, the slides are not running. I'm going to talk to you on a subject which is trigeminal neurinomas. Trigeminal neurinomas is a wonderful skull-based surgery and those who do skull-based surgery and those who do trigeminal neurinoma surgery know that this is one of the most uh, satisfying neurosurgical operation. So I will go back to my historical perspective over several years, maybe more than 30, 35 years of trigeminal neurinoma, my experience with this subject. I'm not sure how many of you are young people here in the audience, but I must let you know that trigeminal neurinomas were almost completely a surgical enigma 30 years ago. Nobody would even venture into trigeminal neurinomas 30 years ago, and this is the story of my life with trigeminal neurinomas. So trigeminal neurinomas are completely benign tumors. They are relatively rare, as you must know, and they are second only to acoustic neurinomas. In neurinomas, acoustic neurinomas, of course, are the most common, and neurinomas, trigeminal neurinomas are the next. Like most other neurinomas, even trigeminal neurinomas are associated with neurofibromatosis on a very, if you have neurofibromatosis too, the chances of getting trigeminal neurinomas are quite common. So I'm going to base my presentation on my very long experience with trigeminal neurinomas. So in the year 2002, I published this series of 73 cases of trigeminal neurinomas. So in 2002, this was the largest personal series in the literature. And from 1988 to 2017, this is my experience with trigeminal neurinomas. So after 2013, another 15, 20 cases. So nearly 300 cases of trigeminal neurinoma is my experience in this, in my hospital, which is a public hospital in Mumbai. And those who know Mumbai, know the city of Mumbai, know the state of public hospitals. And I have to tell you 
that I have really enjoyed this experience over several years. Trigeminal neurinoma. So what I have decided, I, that today I will like to show you my philosophy of how I do trigeminal neurinoma. And in the subsequent lecture, I will like to show you some videos on this operative technique and other things. So this is the cavernous sinus, as you know. Here is internal carotid artery. Here is the sixth cranial nerve. Here is the third nerve and the fourth nerve. And this is the V1 division of trigeminal nerve. And this is the V2 division of trigeminal nerve. And the V3 division exits it does not enter into the territory of cavernous sinus. So cavernous sinus, in the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus are the trigeminal nerves. They are inside the dural walls of the cavernous sinus. And if you see this beautiful dissection done by one of my residents, Dr. Sudeep, who has done some beautiful dissections, and some of my dissections with him have been published and this is the trigeminal nerve along the petrous apex. This is the gasserian ganglion. Gasserian ganglion is the largest ganglion in the entire body. Gasserian ganglion is number one, and number two is C2 ganglion. C2, the white of C2 ganglion is number two in the cell. So this is V1 division. V2 division and V3 division of the trigeminal nerve. Can you, can you mute that person, please? Huh? Okay. My eye, is that okay? Please proceed, sir. Please proceed. Okay. So this is the pituitary gland, this is the intercavernous sinuses, this is the cavernous sinus, sixth nerve. This is the cavernous sinus. This is the trigeminal neurinoma. See, trigeminal neurinomas are very beautifully diagnosed in the era of MRIs. But when MRI was not there, with CT scan, it was very difficult to diagnose trigeminal neurinoma. And very difficult to even understand the trigeminal neurinoma and to operate, of course, was difficult. So majority of trigeminal neurinomas are located in this territory. Here, half the trigeminal neurinoma inside or in the vicinity of trigem, in the vicinity of cavernous sinus, and then it goes into the posterior cranial fossa. Less commonly, or quite uncommonly, the trigeminal neurinoma is completely located in the posterior cranial fossa. These kind of dumbbell-shaped trigeminal neurinomas, dumbbells, are quite common. In the year 1993, for the first time in the literature, we mentioned that this part of the tumor, you must remember in 1993 means 25, 27 years ago, not many people knew about trigeminal neurinomas, not many, much surgery was done at that time. And this was our very tremendous paper on this subject where we said that this part of the tumor is interdural or within the confines of the dura and this tumor does not go into the cavernous sinus venous plexus. During that time, we had said that this part of the tumor is like acoustic tumor and it is subarachnoid in location. So this is what we had said in 92 or 93. 
You fell off the PowerPoint there, Dr. Coyle. You, you, you need to go back on the PowerPoint. There you go. Okay. There you go. Okay. Perfect. So as our experience increased, you know, initially we had said that this part of the tumor is actually subarachnoid in location, subarachnoid, like acoustic tumor. But as our experience has matured further into this business, we have realized that many of these part of the tumor also is within the dural confines. You must remember that this dural relationship of tumor with trigeminal neurinoma has got great clinical and surgical implications. Like if you know that this tumor is within the dura and the carotid artery is away from the tumor, you can work within the tumor and there is a dura which protects from the carotid artery. And if you know that there is dura here and this dura will protect you from the brainstem and from the posterior cranial fossa. So this dural anatomy was not known 25 years ago about many other tumors, but particularly about trigeminal neurinomas. So these dumbbell-shaped trigeminal neurinomas are unique and very fascinating neurosurgical problem. And, you know, when we see such tumors, you get excited because you are going to do a very beautiful case. And here involves your philosophy of understanding of neurosurgery in general, your philosophy of understanding the tumor relationships, your technique of tumor handling, and your technique of tumor resection. All these things are combined when you are going to do such an operation. This is one more beautiful skull-based operation. Frequently, this posterior cranial fossa component can be large like this here. You see, it is quite large. Here, this tumor is within the confines of the dura and in majority of instances, even dura is preserved here. So sometimes the middle fossa component is small and posterior cranial fossa component is large. See, trigeminal nerve from the brainstem goes having gasserian ganglion and then it divides into V1 division, V2 division, and V2 division. Very much less commonly, the tumor can extend along the V1 division of the trigeminal nerve, along the V1. You see, this tumor. Here it is in the cavernous sinus relationship, interdural, and it extends along the V1 division of the trigeminal nerve. Here. Slight delay because of Wi Fi, I believe. Just wait. Usually it passes. Yeah, I mean, his, his, his sound is dropped off. Yeah. Are you still there, Mr. Goyal? Looks like the screen is frozen. But uh -huh. this, this Wi Fi is temporary blip, I believe. Oh, did he fall okay. off? Uh, okay, let me check. Is he, is he falling off? Dr. Goyal, are you there? Okay. See. Yeah, he fell off there. Uh, Ike, do you want to comment so far? <laughs> I don't know what to do here. Yeah, so what Professor Goyle was showing uh, was this trigeminal neuromas. These are, these are best for the anterolateral approaches we have been seeing. Um, so it is a completely an interdural approach. Can you see that again now? 
Yeah, like, okay, I'm sorry. Go, okay, good luck, Well, Go ahead. Sorry. I... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, John, can you hear me yeah. now? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, okay. So here, if you see... You have to, you have to start screen sharing, Dr. Gold. Excuse me. Trigeminal neuronoma uh, is no, along it, it, the V2 division. Dr. The trigeminal well, uh, along Dr. the V2 division. Can you see that? No, we can't. We can't you, please raise your hand. Please no, we can't see hand. it. I, we can't see it. We can't see it. You need to you need to screen share. You need to so click. This is along the V two division, and if you can see oh. this along the <laughs> maxillary division by the side of the T. Yeah. Well. Whoop. Hello. Uh, yes. Okay, IP may have fallen off there. Uh, are you there, Doctor Well? Well, everyone understands the internet connections. I think he fell off there, right? Uh, John, the Wi-Fi is a bit, uh, probably yeah. the Wi-Fi is a bit. Yeah, a bit, a bit spotty, yeah. But he's back in, he's back in. Dr. Will, you're back in? Okay. OK, OK, there we go. There you go. OK, back on track. Perfect. Trigeminal yeah. neurinoma goes along the V2 division of the trigeminal nerve along the mand along the maxillary division. You see, this is the maxillary air sinus, these are the teeth, and the V2 division comes along on the base of the orbit. In the in front of the maxilla is the hole for the V2 division of the trigeminal nerve. Here, in this case, the trigeminal nerve, this is V3 division. You see the tumor is coming along the maxillary, along the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. You see this foramen ovale, and this is the trigeminal neuronoma along the mandibular division. So if you noticed, all tumors, all trigeminal neuronomas, have a connection in the region of the gasserian ganglion. So in the year 1994, we reported for the first time that all trigeminal neurinomas arise in the region of gasserian ganglion. Like acoustic tumor arise in the region of internal artery canal, trigeminal neurinomas arise in the region of metal scale where there is trigem gasserian ganglion. So type A is when the tumor is predominantly in the middle fossa. Type B is when the tumor is predominantly in the posterior cranial fossa. Type C is when it is a dumbbell shaped tumor. And type D is when there is extracranial extension of the tumor. So trigeminal neurinomas can be of various types. So they can be of small trigeminal neurinomas. They can be huge trigeminal neurinomas. The basic thing is whether they are small and whether they are big, the dural relationships remain constant. No matter how big the tumor will become, but the dura will always remain intact here. And the dura will also remain intact in the vicinity of the internal carotid artery and in the vicinity of cavernous sign. So if you have this concept in your mind that if I do surgery here, the dura is going to protect me from carotid artery and from the venous bleeding of cavernous sinus, then you can do a very safe surgery here. Sometimes these tumors, majority of these tumors are not firm tumors. They are not like meningiomas or rock or hard or calcified. They are rarely calcified. More often they are necrotic and cystic. You see necrotic and cystic kind of tumors. And they can become huge necrotic cystic tumors. Most important is 
that they have very characteristic presenting features like numbness in the face, numbness in the distribution of the trigeminal nerve, wasting of the masseter and temporalis muscle, wasting of the pterygoid muscles, difficulty in chewing, numbness over the face. These are the characteristic radiological uh, clinical features. So on the basis of clinical presentation and on the basis of radiological observation, you can make a diagnosis before operation that you are going to operate on a benign tumor no matter how big it is. So that is a very critical thing like radiological features and clinical features combined. So these tumors can be huge. The beauty is even when they are huge, they are you see this necrotic tumor, and I can tell you that this necrotic tumor, if I come from here, I start breaking this tumor, this soft nature of this tumor, I can break within quick time, and this operation should not take more than half an hour, or not more than that, because of the nature of the tumor. It is not a difficult neurosurgical operation at all. You see the nature of the tumor, and you see the well-defined configuration of the tumor, you see the carotid artery displaced by the tumor, never carotid artery will be inside the tumor. It is displaced, it is necrotic, soft. Many of the tumors that I have seen in my series are large, so less than two centimeters are small, 2.4, 2 to 4, 4 to 6, and some are very huge as you have seen in the picture. Sometimes these tumors are cystic in nature. You see cyst. And if you see this picture, there are cysts of two intensities. Here there is black cyst and here there is white cyst. On different imaging of MRI, you can see the different consistencies of the fluid, fluid in this. There is a fluid level in this tumor. Can you see fluid level? And this tumor then goes in the region of cavernous sinus. The tumors which have fluid level, and quite frequently they have fluid level, are more aggressive forms of tumor. Means they are surgically, it is quite easy to remove and quick to remove. But the recurrence rate in such tumors with fluid level is quite high. So if I have seen, suppose I have seen 10 recurrences, five or six must be having cyst with fluid level. And I will probably show you some recurrent cases also. Now you see this tumor, trigeminal neurinoma, having multiple... You fell off. To, oh, there you go. Um, oh, it's okay. John, you are with me? Yes, it's okay. The, the presentation. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's okay. Now you see here, this is a tumor with multiple fluid levels. Multiple fluid levels. These are rare tumors. In pituitary tumors, for instance, pituitary, giant pituitary tumors, you can see multiple fluid levels a number of times. In trigeminal neurinomas, less commonly, but you see I'm showing you this case and it occurs one or two times. Now you see this is a huge trigeminal neurinoma. And if you see multiple fluid levels in the tumor, can you see that? Can you see multiple fluid levels in the tumor? Mm -hmm. And some of these radiological features are diagnostic of trigeminal neurinomas. It is very important to have an impression about what tumor you are going to operate on the basis of radiological and clinical information. 
bilateral trigeminal neurinomas. You see bilateral? Bilateral trigeminal neurinomas are frequently associated with neurofibromatosis. And in such a situation, when to operate and when not to operate is a very critical issue. This is another case of neurofibromatosis that you are seeing. This is a trigeminal neurinoma here, and this is an acoustic neurinoma, you see? And both these tumors are almost like touching each other. And you can imagine the brain stem is almost like completely obliterated. But I must tell you, and you must know this fact very nicely, even in the presence of severe brainstem compression, slow growth of the tumor makes the person tolerate this compression quite safely and easily. I'm not sure about this patient, but I can tell you that this patient must not be having, he must be coming walking and talking. It is not that he must have come unconscious or something. He must be completely conscious, alert, walking, maybe having severe ataxia, maybe having symptoms related to trigeminal nerve and eighth nerve, but it does not mean that this patient, the brainstem compression is causing unconsciousness. Now, this is another case of neurofibromatosis. You can see here, this is a fourth, this is a fourth nerve tumor. This is facial nerve neurinoma. This is acoustic tumor and this is trigeminal neurinoma. So there are multiple tumors in association with neurofibromatosis. You see this tumor, this is CT scan of the head and it shows calcification in the tumor, calcification. And bilateral calcification in the tumor, such calcification are extremely rare, but they can be present and more frequently in neurofibromatosis cases. This is a trigeminal neurinoma, and there is another tumor in the retrobulbar area, in the behind the eyeball. So I thought that this also will be a, some kind of a neurinoma. This patient did not have any NF2, but if you see this, this angiography is showing very extensive vascularity. And this was a hemangiopericytoma. So first we remove this tumor and then we remove this tumor. Postoperatively, you see both the tumors are gone. This is the operation from this side and this is the operation from this side. And I have got a follow-up of several years. This tumor I had done about 20 years ago. And this boy is leading a very healthy life. The question is, you see this tumor with such a remarkable tumor, I must tell you, because many of you are very young audience as I have come to know, 20, 25 years ago, operation in this area was considered to be almost an impossible operation. As far as the age is concerned, many of these patients are in the middle age. We see in the age group 30, 21 to 30 and 31. So this is the more predominant age group for these patients. As I mentioned to you, trigeminal neurinomas have very characteristic, characteristic clinical presentation. Symptoms of trigeminal nerve involvement include numbness in the distribution of the fifth nerve and wasting of the temporalis and masseter muscles are very common and characteristic diagnostic of trigeminal neurinomas. We had reported long time ago that these large tumors <clears throat> can rarely present with symptom of pathological laughter. We had reported in four cases. Now I must be having several more cases over the years. But these large tumors rarely can come like this. 
So one is characteristic clinical presentation. Second is characteristic anatomical relationship, which I have already mentioned to you. And relationship of anatomy determine how you are going to operate on these tumors. So this tumor in the year 1992, you can imagine 28 years ago, this tumor I had done 28 years ago. During that time, skull-based surgery was completely evolving with the contributions of various people in this field. Skull-based surgery was an evolving subject. But I have to tell you, even the anatomy of trigeminal nerve tumor was not understood at that time. So such dumbbell tumors were operated in two stages. Leonard Malice was one surgeon who described to cut the transverse sinus and cut and come in the subtemporal approach to do these tumors in one stage. So that was in 8990. But essentially these tumors were done in two stages. So here this was done in two stages. First, the middle fossa part of the tumor was removed. And then the posterior fossa part was removed like this and like this. Similarly, in 1992, this tumor was removed in two stages. One, like from the posterior fossa, this part was removed first. And then from the middle fossa, this part was removed next. So in the year 1992, I had done two stage operation. But then of course, we developed our techniques and our understanding. Surgery for the middle fossa component, we had said that you play with the dura. And surgery for the posterior fossa component, we had said that you play with the dura and less commonly play with the arachnoid. So this is the picture that I have been showing for several years of trigeminal nerve. You see, this is the trigeminal nerve, gasserian ganglion, V3 division, V2 division, V1 division. This is the CSF or the Meckel scale. This is the trigeminal neuronoma in the middle fossa. You see that the dura is intact. And trigeminal nerve is also intact. So one more beautiful thing I will tell you. In the year 1996, for the first time in the literature we described as a series, that trigeminal nerve can be saved in trigeminal neuronoma surgery. This was not described in the literature as a series. Of course, there were isolated reports, but never as a series. That not only you can preserve the trigeminal nerve, you can improve the trigeminal nerve function. So this is what we had described. So the anatomy of this region is right in the center of the skull. This is the beautiful gasserian ganglion, this dissection by my wonderful colleagues. This is the root of the trigeminal. This is the gasserian ganglion. And this is the V3, V2, V1 division of the trigeminal nerve. This is the tentodial edge, which is coming here. This is the third nerve and the fourth nerve will come along the tentorial edge. I'm not sure if many of you have known that extra dural approach on the basis of the dural anatomy of the tumors for cavernous sinus tumors. Of course, Dolan's has described for aneurysms and Dolan's approach and all those things are very well known to people. But this was the first article in the literature where extradural approach was described for tumors and for various tumors. This I'm showing you today trigeminal neuronomas, then subsequently I will show you other tumors. And this was my book which was published in 1996 and which has shown, which discusses various issues about skull-based surgery. And if you see the drawing on cover page of my book, 
you see the extensive exposure, petrous bone drilling, trigeminal nerve elevation, petrous carotid being mobilized and things like that. Of course, over the period of time, my exposures have become much lesser. My surgical resection has become much more radical despite the exposure becoming reduced. Of course, you grow with the understanding of these tumors. Many of you who have heard me talking on any subject on neurosurgery have heard of this beautiful sentence that meninges are the mother of brain. And I was actually looking at my, how many times I must have used this sentence. I must have used this sentence in my lectures more than 200 times. So I will like to now talk to you about the surgical philosophy of trigeminal neurinomas and how I have developed myself into this field and how I have contributed to the literature in this field. In 1995, 25 years ago, you see this is the tumor and these are my hands. <clears throat> we describe resection of these tumors without opening the skull. Infratemporal fossa intradural approach to trigeminal neurinomas. On the basis of understanding that the dura is intact in these tumors. So intradural approach, intradural approach for trigeminal neurinomas, which if you know has completely revolutionized the field of trigeminal neurinoma surgery, and I have no hesitation to state that we have got a big part in this revolution of trigeminal neurinoma surgery. Now this is the tumor. You can imagine 25 years ago, not now, even now it may not be easy for everyone or for most of us. But in 1992 or 93, I removed this tumor without opening the skull. You see, there is on the basis of the understanding that only it is surrounded by the dura and you can work within the dura to remove this tumor. Also, I will give you another fascinating thing which you may not, may not have read or may, you may not have known. You see this tumor going in the posterior fossa and in the middle fossa. This is a very old slide of mine, 25 years ago, and I removed this tumor without opening the skull. This is the opening, this by just increasing the foramen ovale dimension and infratemporal fossa intradural mm. approach to trigeminal neuron. Of course, now I do, my exposure is not as small as, I, as this one, but infratemporal fossa intradural approach my feeling is even if it is not used this approach very frequently by others but this approach has been instrumental in changing the dynamics of trigeminal neuronoma surgery in the world of trigeminal neuronomas this is another tumor you see here this tumor this is on the basis of clinical findings and on the basis just a minute on the basis of clinical findings and on the basis of radiological understanding, you know that this is trigeminal neurinoma and this is going to be within the dural boundaries of trigeminal nerve. We removed this tumor without opening the skull. That was very long ago. Now I will not do like that. Just to give you an impression about how other tumors in this region behave. This is third nerve, oculomotor nerve. Like trigeminal neurinomas arise in the region of Meckel's cave, we reported that the oculomotor nerve neurinomas arise in the region of oculomotor cistern. Here, they arise here. <clears throat> and when the oculomotor neurinomas increase in size, they are interdural in location. So oculomotor neurinomas are also interdural in location. And we had reported several years ago about oculomotor. So this is an oculomotor neurinoma. 
this is also within the dural confines and if you work within the dura you can actually save the third nerve a feature which has never been described in the literature it is not the capsule of the tumor the covering here is not the capsule but it is dura so you have to understand that you see this is a tri uh, this is a oculomotor neuroma there is dura covering this tumor <clears throat> understanding of this fact is completely a revolutionary understanding similarly we said about c2 neuroma you see this is c1 c2 this is c2 ganglion which i mentioned c2 ganglion is the number 2 ganglion in the body gastrian ganglion is number 1 c2 is number 2 we discussed our big series in 2008 on 60 cases of C2 neuronomas, and then recently I published another 50 cases of C2 neuronomas. This is C2 ganglion. Okay. This is trigeminal or gasserian ganglion. This is the largest ganglion in the body. This is number two ganglion in the body. This is in relationship with the carotid artery. this is in relationship with the vertebral artery this is in relationship to cavernous sinus and this is relationship to a huge venous plexus which is present in this area in 2008 we said that trige like this is the trigeminal neuroma c2 neuronomas are within the dura and there is a small comp and this component is intradural this is what we said in 2008 but subsequently in my subsequent article we have mentioned that even this part of the tumor is intradural or within the dura i must tell you to understand this fact is a very critical understanding when you are going to operate on these tumors and some <clears throat> some of these tumors can be done in very quick time maybe half an hour or 20 minutes you can do these tumors this tumor looks very aggressive tumor in the region of foramen magnum but i can tell you if you understand this tumor this is a quite a straight forward tumor and it is covered by dura 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 circumferentially by dura so it is very similar to trigeminal neuroma you see this this is the dural covering this is c2 neuroma c2 ganglion is the unique ganglion which is outside the spinal canal it is intracranial and extracranial and it is dumbbell shaped like that this is trigeminal neuroma which is bilateral this is c2 neuroma which is bilateral this is c2 neuroma which can go extra spinal this is trigeminal neuroma which can go extra spinal but the dural anatomy of both these tumors are very similar and constant so this is the recent paper which i published another paper on facial nerve neuroma facial nerve like i said trigeminal nerve neuroma arises in the meckel scale like i said oculomotor neuronomas arise in the region of oculomotor cistern like i said c2 neuroma arise in the region of c2 ganglion similarly i am saying and this is probably the first time we said in the literature that facial neuronomas arise in the region of geniculate ganglion of the facial nerve and these tumors are also intradural in location and understanding of these fact that this is a facial nerve neuronoma and this is intradural in location your surgery on these tumors can be very beautifully planned and executed and 
if you do not try to remove this dura, which is not the capsule of the tumor, you can, and preserving the function of the facial nerve as it traverses in this area without heavily coagulating in this area and without heavily manipulating in this area, you can save the function of the seventh nerve. Although I must say, it is not only difficult, it is close to impossible. But if you have to do it, this is the only way by preserving the dura. So trigeminal neuronoma, as I have mentioned to you, is my, as I have grown up in the subject of neurosurgery, and I will like to show you some videos in my subsequent lectures. And Ipe has told me that I should give lecture daily for several days and maybe a month. And uh, I'm sure I will like to show you several cases. <clears throat> So in the year 1996, we published this basal extension of subtemporal middle fossa approach. And this was my incision. You see this incision, this is the glenoid fossa or the mandibular joint, temporomandibular joint. This is the external ear canal. This is the zygomatic process. And this was my incision. In this incision, we elevated the temporalis muscle anteriorly. You see this anterior rotation of the temporalis muscle. We cut the root of the zygoma, roof of the glenoid cavity or temporomandibular joint, roof of the external ear canal, and did partial mastoidectomy. So this was in 1996. I don't do such procedure now, but for the first time, in the subtemporal craniotomy, we included mastoidectomy in the exposure. This was the first article on the subject. So this was the root of the zygoma, roof of the external ear canal, roof of the TM joint, and mastoidectomy. So basal extension was done. So this is what we had done. We were doing for pitoclival meningiomas. We were doing for trigeminal neuronomas and things like that. Early in my, in my experience, we used to do extra dural exposure for all cases, even for the go, those going in the posterior cranial fossa. Now for dumbbell-shaped tumor, several times I do intradural resection. And I will show you these cases. This is V3. You see this is extra dural exposure. The tumor is there. You can expose in very quick time, but to do the tumor when it is going in the posterior cranial fossa becomes a little tight here, and you can use intradural exposure by retracting the, ten, retracting the temporal brain and making a tentorial incision over the fourth nerve, preserving the fourth nerve, and coming in this direction. You can have a big shot for the dumbbell-shaped trigeminal neurinomas. So this was my initial exposure, root of zygoma, roof of TM joint, roof of external ear canal, partial mastoidectomy to have a basal exposure. And long time ago, I had reported experience. Now, of course, I don't do such extensive exposure. Now I resort to this exposure. Splitting of the temporalis muscle. As you can imagine, the temporalis muscle is quite heavily wasted in this situation. And also the vascularity is not high. You can split the temporalis muscle rather easily. And you can have a small mini craniotomy in this area above the gas, above the foramen ovale here in this territory. And then work in the dural compartment in this direction and in this direction to remove this tumor. You see this one tumor, majority of these tumors, as I have told you, are very fantastic neurosurgical tumors. They are located in very difficult territory, as you can imagine, in the region of cavernous sinus, in the region of internal carotid artery, in the region of other cranial nerves. But this fact that the dura protects you 
can make you remove this tumor. Believe me, I must not say like that, but in 15 or 20 minutes, you can be done with this operation. This is another tumor you see within the dural confines. You work within the tumor, work within the dura. There is no need to coagulate too much within the tumor. There is no need to coagulate at all on many of these occasions. Particularly coagulation in the region of the trigeminal nerve is, should not be done. Many of these situations, the dura will be present even in this, in this location. Sometimes there may not be dura present in some of these cases, but in that situation, you have to work in like you are doing an acoustic tumor. Your exposure is here in the temporal split the temporalis muscle and come in this direction. For V1 tumor from here, if the tumor is more anterior, you can come in this direction from here from the, along the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone. For tumors which are going behind and going more behind, you can come in a subtemporal territory in an extradural interdural exposure. This is a tumor, this is postoperative. This is a tumor. You see, I'm showing you this tumor as how it has by itself cut the anterior clinoid process. And by itself, it has eroded the petrous apex bone. So you don't have to actually do any bone work. You have to just come from here, start removing the tumor. The most important thing in tumor surgery, in neurosurgery is to have an art of breaking the tumor. Learn how you have to break the tumor. Learn how you have to demolish the tumor. If you go on coagulating within the confines of the tumor, you may not, you know, you may not reach, achieve your target. Sometimes when I do these operations, I say that coagulating within the confines of the tumor is unnecessary and, op and coagulation outside the confines of the tumor is a technical mistake. So don't make mistake. Break the tumor. Learn the art of breaking the tumor and you can do a quick and beautiful job on these tumors. This is another large dumbbell shaped tumor and you have, and as I have mentioned to you, trigeminal neuronoma surgery does not mean demolition of the trigeminal nerve. This was the concept which existed 20 years, 30 years ago. But now if you demolish the V1 division in particular, if you demolish the V1 division, this eye is finished. It, he will develop a corneal opacity no, not very soon and the eye is going to be finished. This is another huge, beautiful dumbbells because, you know, I'm showing you these dumbbells because many of you are under lockdown and you must do dumbbells to build up your muscles. And these dumbbell exercising is very important, my dear friends, during this lockdown stage when your fingers are not working with the tumors, your muscles should work with the dumbbells. This is another beautiful dumbbell that you are seeing here. And you see the necrotic part of the tumor. These tumors are not hard or firm or rock like meningiomas. These tumors are not vascular like hemangiomas or cavernous hemangiomas or other tumors. These tumors are soft, necrotic and rather avascular tumors. And you can do a quick, rather quick job. This is another tumor I had done several years ago. This is postoperative. This is another tumor you see as I have mentioned to you over the period of last 30 years, my experience with trigeminal neuroma is close to 300 cases. And it gives me a, you know, to talk to you with great authority. I have no confusion in this. You see this, this nubbin here? Now, where is this nubbin? You will be saying it is going inside the carotid artery or it is going inside the cavernous sinus. No, there is a dura here. You must remember this. And if you know that there is dura here, you can resect these tumors rather easily and with fantastic results. These tumors, as I mentioned, this tumor in particular, of course, I don't remember, but it must be a quite a straightforward tumor to remove. 
as i mentioned to you cystic tumors and tumors with fluid levels are easy to operate they are easy to operate all right but they rapidly recur and recurrence rate in cystic tumors are much higher than solid form tumors so this is a solid tumor and this is post operative scan this is another <coughs> huge tumor you see the thing is when this patient comes to you you will ask me what is this tumor you should be able to say with great confidence and without confusion that this tumor is nothing but a trigeminal neuroma and if you have this concept i can remove this tumor with a small bur hole or a little bigger bur hole or mini craniotomy in very quick and effective time carotid artery is always displaced by the tumor and never within the confines of the tumor this is another trigeminal neuroma and this is another this may be a little bit more in the posterior cranial fossa this is another huge tumor <coughs> this is another tumor this is another cystic tumor which had a big recurrence and this tumor with cyst have a recurrent tumor this is another tumor with multiple cyst and this is the post operative scan this is another tumor which somebody had operated earlier and a biopsy had been taken but these tumors no question no biopsy radical complete removal some people do removal and go gamma knife i think no gamma knife in this we as you know we have to learn neurosurgery we have to understand neurosurgery we are not radiation oncologist and let those who are doing radiation they should do radiation but we are surgeons and this is a most beautiful neurosurgical problem where your brain should work and your hand should execute this is another beautiful tumor which is resected so extra cranial extension of this tumor we reported very beautiful report of this that extra dural extra cranial extension is also having dura which is covered and you can use cranial approach to remove extra cranial of course some tumors you can remove without craniotomy and without this you can do and you can use even endoscope and you even even transnasal for some selected cases all right but many of these tumors can be removed very beautifully by transcranial operation so i had reported several years ago 28 cases of extra cranial tumors extra cranial tumors when they occur they are within the dura you must remember and if you have to take one message from me today take this beautiful message that extra cranial tumor is also within the dura this is another tumor with neurofibromatosis you see how this tumor is going here and going there and now what i will do is ipe hello ipe yeah, i i be there i am here i am here i i want uh, you know uh, before i go on with these cases of course i will like to show you some operative slides and videos yeah maybe i can yes, show them in my next time i want yeah, to I, mean... i wish if the young people or if you are also very young my dear i of course you have yes. become now a very big man in neurosurgery but for me you will remain my dear i no matter what you do of course sir of course and i want if you have any questions for me i will be more than happy to answer nothing sir absolutely nothing we are enjoying the show sir please go go ahead no i will like to actually you know this is somehow just a minute this is multi compartmental tumor you see this multi compartmental tumor <clears throat> uh, one the is screen the is cranial one is in the middle fossa and one is in the posterior cranial fossa uh the screen has become so black sir is in in this we, multi compartmental we can say we can say right must also there is dura in multi comp okay just the is the delay in the uh, internet it's just hanging there 
Can you hear me yet? I Atul. can hear you, John. Okay. Atul, can you hear me? He's still on. Uh, he's still he, on, but he's, uh, I yeah, think he's just. Yeah, uh, the Wi Fi, yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll just wait. Say. Okay. I guess this is like taking a coffee break, right? Do you want me to say something or uh, do you want to wait? Uh, whatever. Can we wait for five minutes? And otherwise yeah, yeah, can... yeah, sure. Just like taking a coffee break. Okay. Get you, everyone get your coffee. <laughs> John, yes. During the time that we're waiting, I'm going to show them exactly the approach that we are we are doing here. I'll just oh. show them in the yeah, in excellent. the cadaver first. Excellent. Yeah. As soon as he's back, tell me so I will. Uh, okay. I'll, yeah. I'll I'll stop sharing. Okay. All right. So here we are. Can you see that, John? Yes. We can see the video. Yeah, so what we are doing here is uh, we are going into dural approach. So that is the orbitomeningeal band. So now you have the orbit in front. Where I'm cutting is the orbitomeningeal band. I, my, uh, the forceps is over the temporal lobe. And the frontal lobe is uh, to my right and below. So I am... You can already see the cavernous sign is uh, starting to appear there. I am removing the temporal lobe. I am peeling the temporal lobe away from the cavernous sinus. And once you do this and you peel off this temporal lobe away from the cavernous sinus, you are going to see the entire V1, V2, V3 The V1, V2, V3, you're going to see. I'm uh, doing a clinoidectomy here. So you have the optic nerve there, the clinoid triangle, where my detector is. And now you can see the entire V1, V2, V3, and the gazerian ganglion. And this is exactly where the trigeminal neuronoma is going to be. And that is what uh, Dr. Goyle was talking about, the intradural approach. We, we are literally extradural here. 
You can see the V1, you can see the V2, and you can see the V3 and the gazetting ganglion. So this is exactly the dissection. And uh, if you preserve the, the true cavernous membrane, there's not going to be any bleeding. And you are right on the tumor. I mean, you do this, uh, you're right on the tumor. That's a gazetting ganglion. What I'm showing rare right now is a gazetting ganglion. So uh, this is exactly what he meant by how big, how much ever big is this tumor, this trigeminal. Maybe we can show you some videos. Professor Goyal will show you some videos, but we can also show you some videos where in this approach, we can go to the posterior fossa very easily from here. We don't have to do any drilling. We don't have to go to trisigmoid. If there is a, a sizable middle fossa component, the middle fossa component will lead you into the posterior fossa. And uh, sometimes, very, very uh, rarely, sometimes if the middle fossa component is small and the posterior fossa component is big, sometimes a very little bit of anterior petrosectomy is required. That also is there in this video. But uh, has Professor Goyle joined back? Not yet. All right. So let's go ahead and see this. So what I am opening right now is between the fourth and the V1. And between the fourth and the V1, you're going to see the C5 segment of the carotid. That's what I am uh, showing right now. And uh, medial, to, uh, medial to the V1 segment, you will see the sixth nerve. And sometimes in these surgeries, as Professor Goyle was saying, that you have to preserve the, the trigeminal nerve completely. I mean, you can peel off the tumor and you don't have to remove the trigeminal nerve as such. So it's about tumor dissection. So you can see the paraclival segment right now, the top of the paraclival segment of the carotid right now. And you can see that window is between the fourth nerve and the V1. And I'm going into the cavernous sinus here. These tumors never go into the cavernous sinus, almost never ever go into the cavernous sinus. So you don't have to really worry about, um, you know, cavernous bleeding and all that. This extradural bleeding that you will see is not, not at all related to the cavernous sinus. So what I'm showing you is the sixth nerve now. I'm going to show you the sixth nerve that is medial to V1. I'm going to hook out the sixth nerve uh, that is me running medial to running medial to the V1, and that's a sixth nerve. So in the Parkinson's triangle, that's a sixth nerve and the C5 carotid, and that is a gazetting ganglion. So this is the approach that one will adopt, that I will adopt for uh, trigeminal uh, neuronomas, however big that may be. So I guess I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, I possibly, uh, Dr. Guell could finish at another time, you think? Um, have I stopped sharing, John? Yes. I, do you want to uh, do part two of Dr. Guell at another time of this presentation? Hello, I. Oh, having connections found all over, <laughs> not just one spot. IP there. He'll come back in quick. If he does leave, I gotta let him in though. He fell out. Don't know. How you doing, Doctor? Dead run? Are you there? Well, Roberto, I think we could use some organ music. Sure, no. <laughs> Not this morning, huh? No, 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 no. You okay. have to make today. Oh, we have to make it. We have to make reservations, right? The more the people, the more we can shy. <laughs> I know, I know. This is, yeah, you should get nervous. The first time, it was just a couple of people. Well, we got about 100 here. 
Yeah, Sandra, too much, too much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's see here. Well, uh, well, does anybody have any ideas? Anybody have any interesting stuff they want to show relevant to the topic? Because this is open, this is for learning. If you have any cases of, that are related to uh, what Dr. Goel was talking about, feel free to say, hey, I want to show something. No volunteers? So, uh, this, or you can just hang here with me. I'm just going to hang here and wait. Wait for uh, this is the most people we've ever had, uh, Roberto, with 100 people. Oh, man, oh, man. I'm going to get some, let some in here. John? Yeah, oh, okay, up your back, okay. Yeah, I think he's getting back. Oh, good. Yeah, we'll just edit this out. I just called him and he said he's coming, he's getting back. Okay, good. <coughs> so I guess um, anybody okay. has any? Oh, okay, great. There he is. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. It's there like taking a coffee. Break. Just, just a coffee break. That's all it was. <laughs> was I was holding the phone for you. Now what I'll do is. I would like to now have questions and okay. some other opinions. Okay. I think that is what uh, will be better for me now. Okay. So I was just showing the approach, anterolateral approach, uh, where I, uh, where we have the true cavernous membrane and how we dissect the temporal lobe off from the cavernous sinus. So uh, we would like to see your operative videos uh, in the next lectures, but I was showing them. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many of them understood the interdural approach. So I was just showing them how to go ahead with the interdural approach. Just uh, while you were while you were off in the five minutes, I just showed them that. Yes, yes, yes. So, do you think somebody has some questions? Okay, panelists. Now's your time. Your, your opportunity to ask Dr. Goel a question. I believe there's a couple of people. Oh, Mohammed, okay, I'll let you, I'll unmute you there. I'm sorry, Mohammed. Go ahead. No, we're getting a little awkward here. Mohammed, go ahead. You can unmute yourself and ask a question if you'd like, because I see your hand is raised. Mohammed, go ahead. An ama amazing lecture. I'm, I'm Mohammed from Indonesia. Um, uh, my question is about uh, your statement about. Uh, that most of the time, the tumor will be covered by the dura circumferentially. Um, sorry for my lack of anatomical understanding because uh, what I know caused by the constriction of the tumor in the uh, mechal cave. So the posterior posterior part must be cistern now. So when you say that most of the time it's Within the dura, it's it's quite confusing. Uh, so yeah, if, if no, you can I, explain it, you just don't yes, it. yes. See, I will tell you that as I mentioned to you, even in my own slides, the posterior cranial fossa is a little bit of a you know still an enigma for me. But posterior fossa is like an acoustic tumor in general. But in several cases. You will not be surprised if you see a dural cover. So I am not saying about the posterior cranial fossa all the time that there will be a dura there. I am not saying. But in, in a, quite a number of cases, even the posterior cranial fossa part of the tumor will be covered by dura. That is what I am saying. And that gives you a good a uh, good kind of a uh, you know plane for dissection
Oh, so, so how many times did you find that it's covered by Dura? The Dumbo said tumor. Oh, like, uh, I will say a number of times, percent? and particularly when there is an extracranial compartment, it is almost always covered by Dura. But when it is dumbbell shaped, I will say at least 40% times it is going to be covered by Dura, at least 40%, if not more. Uh, would you say that if if uh, if the shape of the tumor is is, is not dumbbell, uh, the, the it's a, uh, there is a higher percentage that you will find a dura covering all the tumor. No, no, no. If it is dumbbell shape, it will be higher percentage. It is quite a okay. well defined dumbbell shape. The percentage is higher. Sometimes the posterior fossa component may be much bigger. So that is the answer. Thank you so much, Professor Guru. Okay, more questions? Step up. So what, uh, John? Yes. I, I has asked me to give a series of lectures. So oh. I am going to plan a quite a elaborate series over the period. By the time this corona disappears from our lives, I would like to go on giving lecture after lecture. Oh, excellent. So be ready for the lectures, okay? Me studio, me studio is two studio. <laughs> but we have some music here. Let me get, let me get the, I'm sorry, get there. Okay, qu uh, questions. Uh, uh, some other people had some questions here. I'm not getting John? them. Go ahead. John. Go ahead. John, uh, we are going to schedule Professor Goyle's lectures as the second lecture so that he can carry on. And the first lecture, I mean, whatever is scheduled will be scheduled. And every day till Professor Goyle wants to go ahead and give the lecture, as long as it is, we, can. he can go ahead and keep on uh, giving lectures. Okay, so, very good. Uh, but that is what uh, we have uh, told him. We'll, we'll all learn from him, I'm sure. Uh, so today was remarkable, uh, the kind of tumors, I mean, I've never seen these kind of tumors, you know, uh, these kind of scans that I have, he has shown, um, I've never seen, or, you know, although it's uh, over 20 years that I've been in neurosurgery, I'm, uh, some of these tumors I've never seen. So this is what we will learn from him. And so his operative videos also, his experience would be very valuable for us. So as long as he wants to give on, keep on giving lectures, he is welcome. We will, uh, he has many life surgery shoes. We will be looking forward to see that as well. And um, uh, the other first lectures, we will keep on, um, you know, keep on going, going ahead and uh, uh, presenting that. So um, I think no, if there are no more questions, we can conclude. And uh, I can uh, thank Professor Goyle from uh, all this group. And by the way, Walken is just trying to get Professor Yasagil for a message to the group. Uh, it's premature to say whether he'll be able to give the message or not, but uh, we have already asked Walken to uh, tell Professor Yasagil to give us a message on someday. Yeah, so thank you very much, Professor Goyle. I'm sure all of us have enjoyed, sir. Uh, we are learning from you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you very much, my dear Ibe and John. It was my great pleasure to be with all of you. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Yes, yes, sure. Very okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay.